Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing another really interesting black hole discovery, the one that's never really been made before, a discovery of a relatively small black hole that we sometimes refer to as the stellar mass black hole, in this case with a mass of about 11 masses of the sun, but in a completely different galaxy, and also at a very far away distance from us. So let's discuss a little bit more about how all of this was discovered and what this means to astronomy. But let's start right here, just to sort of get an idea of where this was discovered and also to some extent try to understand how difficult this would be using a typical telescope. So the larger galaxy you see right here, that's the Milky Way galaxy. And the two smaller ones, that's the Magellanic Clouds. The one I'm pointing at, that's the Large Magellanic Cloud. The average distance to this galaxy is around 160,000 light years away from us. And this particular galaxy has always been super exciting to study mostly because of a lot of different activity going on on the inside and because of a lot of really strange and somewhat unusual stars, clouds of gas and globular clusters. As a matter of fact, some of the most extreme stars we've discovered in the vicinity are all in this galaxy and usually in the same nebula known as the Tarantula Nebula. The gorgeous nebula you see right here. And some of the stars here are ridiculously massive. The most massive star discovered to date is inside of this nebula. It's over 300 masses of the sun. And it's actually somewhere right here, although I'm not entirely sure which of the stars it is. But there are several different really interesting and unusual clusters present in this particular galaxy. And one of them we're zooming into right now, and it's known as NGC 1850. Although technically there are two parts, there is the A part and the B part. Here's sort of what the actual cluster looks like if you were to zoom in here completely. Now the distance here is approximately 168,000 light years away from us and obviously because of the distance it does require an extremely powerful telescope to actually be able to tell individual stars apart. So all of this was only achieved using some of the most advanced telescopes using the European Southern Observatory. But that's basically the limit of the resolution it can create. We can see these individual stars but that's pretty much it. And because there are thousands of different stars in this cluster at least in theory, trying to discover some kind of a tiny object here would be almost impossible. And you have to remember here, typical black holes in terms of the actual size are really really small, and they usually only announce themselves if they're absorbing a lot of mass from something and are spewing out a huge amount of x-rays and a lot of other radiation that's visible from far far away. In this particular case, nothing like this is seen anywhere here. But despite of this, this global cluster is under a lot of investigations for one really important reason. It seems to be extremely different from every global cluster we've discovered to date. Actually, there is one small one in the Milky Way galaxy that seems to be similar, but that one is just way too small to compare. And so what exactly is so different about this particular cluster? Well, normally clusters, global clusters, are extremely old often as old as the galaxy itself. Here we're talking about anywhere from 10 to even 12 billion years old. And they generally contain relatively similar characteristics, and they usually will contain somewhat similar stuff on the inside. NGC 1850 seems to be extremely young. It seems to be only about 50 million years old. And it even has a slightly smaller partner that's only about 4 million years old. And because of this, a lot of astronomers are actually interested in trying to understand how this global cluster was created and more specifically why it was created relatively recently. In other words, what exactly is happening in the Large Magellanic Cloud that's causing these young clusters to appear? The only other young cluster that's known to the scientists is this one right here in the Milky Way known as Westerlund 1. But as you can see from this image, also from the ESO, it's really really small. And it's also not really globular or circular. And so whatever is happening here is definitely a little bit more mysterious. And so the scientists decided to study this cluster in more detail, and specifically they wanted to investigate pretty much each of the individual stars in order to maybe discover some of the mysteries hiding here. Now there are a lot of stars here. The total mass of this cluster is 42,000 masses of the sun, which of course means that there are thousands and thousands of stars they had to go through. But there was one star sort of sticking out. Or specifically the emissions from one of the stars were a little bit different. So here's what all of this looked like. When they looked at the wavelengths, one of them was shifting a lot. It was changing its colors way, way too much, as if something was pushing and pulling on the star. Something that was very likely about 11 masses of the sun, with the star itself being really, really close to the black hole, 
but not close enough where the black hole starts to basically absorb the mass and emit a lot of the various radiations, such as for example the X-rays. So in this case they discovered a binary system with a black hole and a star partner. And the star here was moving at a speed of about 300 kilometers per second, changing its wavelength just enough to be noticeable from this distance. And so using this technique, they definitively confirmed that there is at least one major black hole orbiting in this cluster. With the star itself also being relatively massive, approximately five masses of the Sun. And obviously other galaxies do possess black holes and we've even discovered signs of them through for example gravitational wave interaction or sometimes by seeing extremely powerful X-ray emissions, this is the first time the scientists have officially confirmed that an actual black hole is orbiting the star by observing the periodical changes in the wavelength of the emissions coming from the star. Which is of course a pretty important discovery because we know that there are a lot of black holes out there and we know that the vast majority of them are completely invisible. It's almost impossible to see them because they usually don't interact with anything. A lot of scientists also suspected that typical globular clusters will often contain a lot of these hidden black holes all over the place, mostly because of the way that the globular clusters are maintained and because some of the ancient stars that went supernova very likely just left black holes behind that are still orbiting somewhere in these globular clusters. And so finally confirming the existence of such a black hole in a cluster may eventually help scientists answer some of the burning questions when it comes to the mysteries of black holes. For example, why is it that so many black holes have been colliding across the universe and where exactly do these collisions happen? Some of the scientists believe that they actually happen inside global clusters. And if so, this right here could be maybe one of these potential answers the scientists are looking for. And on top of this, because this is a completely new technique, it will allow the scientists to now investigate other global clusters and thus discover even more hidden black holes. And so, for example, right here, because this is a young cluster, we don't really expect too many black holes to exist just yet. More and more will appear in time, but for now, the majority of these hidden black holes should really be in some of the older clusters. And so, by applying the same technique to some of the clusters in the Milky Way galaxy, we might end up discovering a tremendous amount of these hidden black holes right here in our neighborhood. Also, because this is a pretty young black hole, Comparing the properties of this object with some of the older black holes can help the scientists figure out how black holes evolve over time and how they change as they grow in size or as they absorb matter from their partners. And so this could also be one of the youngest black holes discovered so far. And so definitely a pretty exciting method and a pretty exciting discovery. But I guess for now that's really all there is to the study. Once this method is applied to some other clusters or some other regions, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who wants to learn about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.